Amen. See, when God blesses, He doesn't add any sorrows to it. Amen. That's right. Satan blesses in the world materially because it makes us walk away from Him. Yes. yes. That's the right concept of God, folks. You know, you might pray for a Cadillac and you end up with a bike with a flat tire. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Remember, the Bible tells us that we're going to become more and more like Christ, and Jesus didn't even have a place to sleep. That's right. He didn't have a jet and a million dollars. Yeah, yeah. People fall into that all the time. Supposed to be rich. No, rich in spirit, mm -hmm. not in wealth. Yes, yeah. He's trying to change what's going on inside of us, but you can't buy that. Yeah. You can buy a lot of headaches and problems, but you can't buy salvation. All right, now look what it says. I know nothing good, but verse 18, follow along with me now. In my sinful nature, I want to do what is right, but I can't. I want to do what is good, but I don't. You know, you get on your knees in the morning and say, all right, Lord, I'm with you. Yeah. Yeah. The next thing you know, something comes into your head and right off you are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. He's trying to talk about the dual nature in us. Mm -hmm. See, that's how you know the Holy Spirit is speaking. This is real. Yeah. This is real. This isn't some fake stuff. I got to go through the same stuff you do. I work around people. I got to get in traffic. I don't want your money to support me. I want your money to support Jesus. Amen. I go to work for my money. I don't need your money. Amen. God provides everything for me. Amen. We need money to provide the work of the ministry. That's why there's other people here now, because these doors will open. Amen. If we didn't pay the rent, they wouldn't be. Now look what it says. This is beautiful. I want to do what is right, but I can't. You get born again, and you really want to do what is right. But that pull, yes. that pull of that flesh is so strong. Jesus said it. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. How many can amen to that one? Amen. amen. See, that's why Jesus, look, Jesus is the only one that can fix us. We can't fix ourselves. We're hopelessly helpless with all of them. Now look what it says. I want to do what is good, but I don't. Verse 19. I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do it anyway. But if I do what I don't want to do, I am not really the one doing wrong. It is sin living in me that does it. So we all know that we have sin living in us. I have discovered this principle of life. Not as the Apostle Paul. That when I want to do what is right, I inevitably do what is wrong. I love God's law with all my heart, or all God's word. But there, look what he's saying. There's another power within me that is at war with my mind. You get it? This power makes me a slave to the sin that is still within me. Now look what it says. Oh, what a miserable person I am. <laughs> it makes us miserable because we want to do right and we find ourselves doing wrong. It makes us miserable. Yeah. Yeah. You shouldn't be a miserable Christian if you really understand the concept. Yeah. Look. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? Thank God. The answer is in Jesus Christ our Lord. So you see how it is? In my mind, I really want to obey God, God's law. But because of my sinful nature, I am a slave to sin. Amen. So do you get the concept? So next time you become enslaved to your sin again, stop saying, oh, I don't think God loves me anymore. Amen. God loved you the moment you believed. He loves you unconditionally. He doesn't see your sins anymore. He sees your son, his son. Amen. That's the truth of the Bible. Don't let anybody tell you different. Because we're going by the principles of the Word of God here, not by any religion. Yep. We're going by the Bible. Amen. God is our teacher, yes. not Amen. people or religion. Amen? Amen? Amen. The problem is, most people won't get into the Bible, they'll just follow some kind of religion instead. It's easier. <laughs> and it's to follow you right into the pit. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, we got the concept down? Yes. 
All right, now listen to this. You were given some astounding birthday gifts when you were born again. Real, real awesome gifts. You got the family name. You're in God's family, okay? You got the family likeness. You're like Jesus. Look, you got family privileges. Family intimate access. You have intimate access to God at any given time now. You don't have to go into a closet or into a church or anywhere to pray. And you don't have to go to anybody else but directly to God. Amen. Amen. No more anything else. You don't have to go to people, to nobody. You go directly to God. Amen. Intimate access. That's a personal relationship through Jesus Christ. You have that. And you also have the family inheritance. We all inherit the kingdom. It's ours. All right, go with me to Philippians 4 now. Oh, this, is, this is really bad. I don't, I don't know if I doubt I'll be able to get through this. It's already 8 o'clock. Yep. But we did run five minutes over, so I'm going to go a little bit longer. <laughs> They're going to get the hour in. <laughs> and if your heart is right, you're going to want more of this. As a matter of fact, the Apostle Paul was preaching for so long, the king fell asleep and fell out the window. They were preaching all day and night. They were just listening to him. So when the spirit is seeking and your heart is right, you want more and more of it. You can't get enough. But I feel like saying... Is it over yet? <laughs> well, something wrong. You got a hot problem. You got a hot problem. <laughs> <laughs> Don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> Philippians 4, look at verse 19. Apostle Paul again writing to the Philippians. And this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches. Which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. Now all glory to God our Father forever and ever. Amen. Alright, he says it right here. He will supply all your needs. What do we do? We all try to supply our own needs, right? Instead of depending on God. No, we get greedy. He supplies our needs, not our greeds. That's right, yeah. As children of God, we get to share in the family fortune. Okay? Here on earth we are given the riches of His grace. That's a rich thing. To have God's grace is very, you're very rich. Amen. His kindness, if you can look, all the fruits of His Spirit, you're very, very rich. Look, Amen. His kindness. Look, see, he's not talking about money here. He's talking about what? His well, grace, His kindness, patience. Yeah, that's Come on. How many of you are patient? <laughs> Come on, we want instant Jesus. I want to grow spiritually now. I've been reading the Bible for two months. I should be right there. <laughs> or two minutes. I want, uh, they're probably going to make a church and go drive through to get a message and go. <laughs> That's where this country's going. Yeah. You, can't, you can't, no, it doesn't happen that way. Yeah. <laughs> Yep, I'm safe. See you later. Give me your money. No, that's what we want. We want instant look. Huh? God, you're my genie. I'm coming to you, and you better come through for me. <laughs> that's just what we do. When he don't, which he will, in his time, in his way, we say, hmm, I'm never going to follow you again. He's like, you were following you. Look what happened. You follow me, you're going to be, have a better life. That's only going to hurt you, not me. Yeah, Look, your sins, I want you to tell you, let me make one thing straight before we close. Your sins don't hurt God. They hurt you and other people. God paid the, Jesus paid the penalty. He took the hit at the cross for all your sins. They don't, God don't see him. It don't hurt him. He hates sin because it hurts his kids. Yeah, you can go to God and say, yeah, I'm going to walk away from you. Oh, I'll fix me. I'm just going to walk away from God. <laughs> Dude, that's really, that's a real smart choice. Walk away from the guy who created you and the one who can fix you. Yeah, really. That's a good choice. God's like this. 
<laughs> you really want more suffering before you come back? That's right. Amen? Amen. His, look, you get his patience, you get his glory. Look, whenever you overcome something, I don't care what you tell me. When you say no to your sinful nature, and at the end of the day, you're like, yeah! yeah. Yes. But when you fall to it, at the end of the day, you're like, I don't know why I did that. There's no joy in it. Nobody wants to try that part, though, to overcome it and say, yeah, at the end of the day. I want something instant. See, we have to understand maturity here. The devil tries to get us to, to self-indulge. Look, his glory, his wisdom, his power in mercy. You, ever, you really think grace is hard, right? Try to give somebody mercy. Something that they did to you outrightly, that they, you don't, they don't deserve your mercy. You give it to them anyway. You give them Amen. a pass. Amen. Try that one. Mm -hmm. You can't do it in the flesh. You can't give grace in the flesh. But in eternity, in eternity, we will inherit even more. Amen? Amen. All right, we're not to close there tonight, okay? Oh, thank, thank you for showing up and sharing. We're just going to come up and sing, and we're going to continue this message next week. Amen. Amen. Amen.